Now we come up on something that's really extraordinary. We know that in the scalar problem x prime equals ax with an initial condition of x naught, the solution is e to the at times x naught. Now in the vector problem, x prime equals ax with constant matrix A, and x zero is x naught. Does it make sense to think about writing down that solution as an exponential? In other words, can we make sense of this function e to the ta for a matrix value of a? Well, one of the ways that we have to talk about the exponential function is its Taylor series. And that converges for all values of x. So suppose we just put in a matrix instead of x. Well, the corresponding to 1, we have the identity matrix. But then we can take powers of a. a is an n by n matrix, so we can multiply it by itself as many times as we like. This series actually works. It converges for all matrices, and it gives us what you could think of as a matrix function of A. Let's go ahead and put a T in as well, since we want to solve time-dependent problems. So this has a number of properties. First of all, e to the ta is equal to the identity matrix if t is equal to 0. Again, identity is the matrix form of 1. The derivative of e to the ta is a times e to the ta. But since multiplication is not commutative, we have to consider the other product too, and that's also equal, e to the ta times a. The inverse of e to the ta is e to the negative ta. So these three things are exactly what we would want from an exponential function. And then there's a fourth thing that we want from exponentials that we almost get. The exponential of a sum is the product of the exponentials in either order, but only if a condition is met a times b has to equal b times a in order for this to be true. Let's get back to our linear ODE. There are some very important facts that follow from that series definition and the other properties. The general solution of x prime equals a times x can be written using a matrix exponential. x equals e to the ta times an arbitrary vector c. Second, e to the ta is a fundamental matrix. Not only that, it's the unique fundamental matrix for this ODE that is equal to the identity at time zero. And in the particular case of an initial value problem, the matrix exponential is very handy because, as I said at the start, we can write the solution as e to the ta times x naught. So that's all great, but how do we actually get our hands on a matrix exponential? 
If you're going to do this by hand, then the best way of doing it depends on something important about this matrix A. It depends on whether A is what we call defective. Now we did encounter this term before, but let me remind you. We said that every eigenvalue carries two types of multiplicity. There's the algebraic multiplicity, which is the root multiplicity of lambda in the characteristic polynomial. And there's the geometric multiplicity, which is the dimension of the eigenspace that goes with lambda. And that is equal to the number of basis vectors that it takes to express the null space of a minus lambda times i. And we said that the eigenvalue is defective if its geometric multiplicity is less than its algebraic multiplicity. Finally, the matrix A is defective if it has any defective eigenvalue. The executive summary about a defective matrix is that there aren't enough eigenvectors in the n by n case to really fill out all n dimensions. In general, this is not an easy thing to spot, but it is very easy to tell when you have a defective matrix in the 2 by 2 case. First of all, if A has no repeated eigenvalues, then it's not defective. That's true regardless of the size. If a 2 by 2 matrix has a repeated eigenvalue, so you have one double eigenvalue, then there are two possibilities. Either A is a multiple of an identity matrix, or A is defective. 